morning, my brothers and sisters. Uh, we welcome our conference call campus, our Facebook campus, those on our website, and those who are viewing us uh, on YouTube, and of course those of you, my brothers and sisters, who are in the sanctuary. We welcome you to the Purity Baptist uh, Sunday School, where we believe that Sunday School is worth getting up for. Our lesson today is entitled, God De Offers Deliverance. Our scripture is Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 8. Let us pray. My Father and my God, we come again in this new day to thank you for your many blessings. And my Father and my God, we don't come uh, uh, not knowing that it, it was us. We come knowing that it was you who came, stayed with us throughout the night, kept watch over these old heartbeats and, and, and woke us up this morning and got us started on our way. And we're mighty grateful for that right now, my Lord. And then, my Father and my God, we also come knowing that we are not perfect people. We may have said or done some things that are not pleasing in your sight, and we pray right now that you would forgive us. We are godless sorry for those because we know that you are a forgiving God. And then, my Father and my God, we thank you for this branch of Zion. Thank you for the angel of this house. Pray that you might touch him, stand at, tall in him, stand round about him, lead God and protect him. Pray for the congregation of the Purity Baptist Church collectively and individually. Pray for those who are sick among us, that you might stretch out your hand and heal as only you can, because you are the God who healeth us. You are the Lord, our healer. And now, my Father and my God, this is a teaching moment, and I pray right now that you will stand up in your daughter that I might be able to expound on your word with clarity and with authority, and that you would put your words in my mouth that I might say what you would have me to give to your children this morning. These and all other needful blessings we ask right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost with forgiveness of sin. Our soul says amen and amen. This morning, <clears throat> when we, our lesson is entitled, God Offers Deliverance, and we are going to identify what endures and what does not endure those things that last and those things that are just temporal. And then we want to look at hearing and listening to God. Beginning with verse 1 of the 51st chapter of Isaiah, it says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, Look unto the rock whence you are hewn, and to the uh, hole of the pit whence you are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and uh, increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The owls shall wait upon me, and on mine arms shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. 
for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall and my salvation from generation to generation. Um, today's uh, use of the term deliverance is used in the context of liberating or setting free from sin and bondage. First of all, I am certain, and you know these people also, that there's a certain portion of the uh, population that will never hear you the first time you say something. <clears throat> these people live in your house. You take care of them. <clears throat> you know them well. The first time you say something, it's just chatter, noise. The second time you speak, they realize that you are actually forming words directed at them. The third time you speak, you may get a response because by then they have begun to process the information that they hear. Well, that seems to be our lesson, uh, the situation in our lesson today. God is speaking through his prophet Isaiah. And the first three verses, we look at those verses, and the first word in verse one says, hearken to me, hearken to me. It's not just uh, listen to me, but to pay attention to me. Um, the King James Version uh, uses the word hearken, which means to hear, but not just to hear, but to hear for understanding. The NIV uses the word listen. In today's world, when we want someone to uh, get our attention, uh, we want to get someone's attention, we speak louder. Hello? Excuse me? In public places, the public announcement system uh, comes on and starts with, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Newspapers put out maybe extra editions with bold uh, headlines. Television and radio usually starts with that crazy beeping, loud beeping that makes that gets your attention, and then they make their announcement. Well, when we look at this term hearken, we um, Isaiah says, in in other words. I want you to really hear me this time, not just think that this is chatter or noise. I am saying something that you need to hear right now. In fact, he said that three times in the first eight uh, verses of this chapter. Now, God is saying uh, uh, through his prophet that uh, those of you who genuinely want to follow uh, righteousness and those who seek the Lord. L look, at, look to your past. Look to from whence you came. Where here he likens it to a rock. First of all, a rock is, has to erode over time so that your past has not been forgotten, it's still there if you would look for it. Uh, we would say the rock of our salvation because
all these terms, the rock of our salvation. But Isaiah says to us that, you know, look back. Look back to where you came from. Look back to where you came from. Um, you know, in a New Testament church, we would talk about um, the everlasting arm um, and we would uh, throw out lots of uh, uh, words. We'd say um, Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the bright and morning star. But he is saying to them, he is not using these flowery terms, but he is saying to them, look to the rock. Uh, we, the New Testament implication here, we can look at Luke 20, verse 17, and the B portion of that uh, verse, that the stone, the rock, the building, Jesus Christ, our Savior, our rock, our everlasting portion. Isaiah reminds his hearers that uh, the role that Abraham and Sarah played in their history. Uh, God promised Abraham that Abraham would be the father of many nations. So God is promising the exiles that their land would be restored. Zion, we use, see that term in uh, verse 3, uh, Zion sometimes refers to the city of Jerusalem, but the most common usage of that term Zion in this context is what God was going to accomplish in Jerusalem or with the Israelites themselves. He, meaning God, would restore Zion so that joy and thanksgiving of his people would be like that of paradise or Eden before the fall. God is making that promise, and we know that he is no shorter than his word. As we continue <clears throat> looking at the verses, we see again in verse 4 that Isaiah uses that term hearken again. Listen, I want you to hear this this time. God, through the prophet, solemnly charges his people to listen intently. He wants them to attune their ears to him. Take this information in and process it. He was getting ready to do a new thing, and he wanted them to be hearers of this new instruction, this new law. But this is the second time in our scripture that this word has been used. And if you're looking at the NIV, it says listen. The NIV says listen, but when we use the term hearken, it means just a little bit more intently. You, uh, listen to me with intentions of hearing me this time. He wants them to attune their ears to him, God does. Um, the law spoken of here is really instruction. Uh, instruction in today's language, you know, uh, of promised justice, uh, not only for Israelites, uh, but for Gentiles as well. For us, when we get a new package, we open it up, and we don't know how, then we realize all these little plastic bags and plastic screws. <laughs> we don't know what to do. First of all, we didn't read the instructions because we already knew how to put it together. <laughs> then we sit there for a while and mull over the situation and decide it is time to read the instructions. 
And this is what Isaiah is saying, uh, that God is saying through his prophet, it is time now to read the instructions. In verse 5, when God says his righteousness is near, it means that it's ever-present. It is ever-present. Um, we realize, too, that uh, he says there in verse 5, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arms shall judge the people. The owls shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Well, while these, his word has gone out, uh, Isaiah uses that term owls, but the, his word has gone out to all the nations. If we substitute owls for nations, we realize that the whole world has been covered or can be covered by God's word that it was just not, there again we have found out, it was not just for the Israelites, but God was making his word known to everybody. And we thank him for that right now because as we stand here in this New Testament church, we stand on the promise that God was make his uh, a word available to all of us. He told his disciples what? Go ye therefore, Go ye therefore, and make disciples, make disciples. Th that is to us today. We are not all preachers, we are not all teachers, but we can still tell the story. We can tell the story that Jesus lives. He's in us. Um, while the Israelites not only long, just long for physical evidence uh, that they would uh, 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 be free or delivered, they would also hunger for the reign of God's righteousness and justice in God's time, in God's own time, not man's time. And I, I, I came upon and I remembered uh, those of you who uh, in the Tuesday Bible study, know this. I say this often, Galatians 4.4, 4, that in the fullness of time, God sent his son, born of a virgin. In the fullness of time, in God's own time, to be the perpetuation for our sins, and we're mighty glad for that. We asked, uh, as we say, look in verse six, um, says, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. First of all, what, when they looked up to heaven, they were praying. But Isaiah is saying here that Heaven and earth is going to pass away. But the promise of God's salvation would continue to exist. We realize that that is a promise, that that is a hope, that is a confident expectation that God's word, God's salvation, would last forever. We stand on that confident expectation all of our lives because as believers, we believe that God's word is irrefutable. It's gonna be here, it's gonna stay here. Hope, that hope of a future, the confident expectation of a future with um, our God. Verses 
7 and 8 says, Hearken unto me. There again, we use that third time, we've used that term, hearken unto me. As I said, NIV is saying listening. But when we hear the term hearken, it means just a little bit more than just casual listening. It means to keep our minds focused on what's coming next. Lift uh, verse 7. Uh, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment. And we all know how what happens when we put away wool clothes and we don't protect them. We come back in the winter and we have holes here and holes there where the moth have had a very good dinner all summer long eating up our clothes. So he's using terms here that they can easily recognize. And, and as I said, for the third time in our lesson, he uses that term, hearken. Pay attention to what I'm saying. This is serious, guys. Here. Reach out and grab it. Listen for it. Pay attention to it. Excuse me. Hello. And, and when we want to get somebody's attention, we speak just a little louder, which doesn't mean that they're going to hear you anymore. It's just it does something for us. <laughs> the relationship between salvation, righteousness, and and eternity are entwined. They are related. They cannot be uh, separated so that you can have um, two, one without the other or two without one. When we look at our righteousness, what does Isaiah say about it? It's just like, what, filthy rags. But God's salvation is forever. Um, it, it is for eternity. And that's what makes us um, a little, I hate to use the term delivered. <laughs> But we use that term in the New Testament church where God has delivered us from something, some kind of bondage. To us at any time, but we've got to work at it. We've got to hear about it. We've got to be able to put it in uh, in a way that it does not encounter upon our what? Our righteousness. But when we are delivered, truly delivered, when we have accepted that, um, that hope, 
that confident expectation that God will do what he said he would do. This is lesson today is what, we, if we boil it down to one word, the one word would be hope. The one word would be hope. And Isaiah is just telling us how we can do that. Our takeaway this morning, or for this week, is in the form of my, of my ending prayer. Because I feel that we need to, uh, if we have it in us, uh, we can bring it out any time that we need it. And it's in the form of a prayer. And so I thank you for um, your attention this morning. Our lesson for next week is entitled, um, excuse me, our lesson for next week is entitled, The Word Becomes Flesh. And it's found in the book of John, um, the first chapter and the first 14 verses. Let us pray. Lord, help us to hear you in our hearts. Help us to listen, attune our ears so that we can listen intently. We can hearken to the Spirit's urging to seek your righteousness and your salvation. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We are certainly grateful to God for all that he has done. Can we give God praise uh, for this morning and for us being here today? Certainly he is good to each and every one of us. And we are grateful uh, that we're here to celebrate our Christ, to celebrate our Academic Re Recognition Sunday, to celebrate our youth, uh, to celebrate all that God is doing in our midst. What an awesome Sunday school lesson. We thank God for Deacon Whitehead. Amen. Uh, we appreciate all of her illustrations and the way that she always makes the lesson real to us. We do uh, ask that you would continue to pray mightily for our church family. Uh, there has been much going on, much happening around us, and we have tried to attend to all of that. But even with all of that being the case, there is still much that needs our prayers. We know that not only is our prayer needed for our church family, but our prayer is needed for the world. And so we want to uh, ask that you would continue to keep uh, our world in prayer, keep all the issues and concerns that we have been dealing with in prayer, and certainly we know that God is able to uh, bring all things around and do everything that he said he would do. Uh, we do know that after our uh, praise and worship, our youth and those who uh, determined that they were going to share in their regalia today will uh, process in together and then we'll move forward uh, with the service. Amen. But we're excited that our men are here and ready and uh, they're ready to lead us in our devotional time and period. And so after prayer, we're going to turn it over to them and let them take us up a little higher. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be in your presence. God, we know that you are here with us and that you are guiding us. And so we pray now that you would cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds, purify our thoughts, unite us on one accord, that what we do would be done to your honor and to your glory. We thank you, Father, for the privilege that you have given us to come into your presence one more time. And now, God, we need you to be in our midst, oh God. We need you to strengthen us and give us what we stand in need of as we go forward. We pray that you would anoint to overflowing all that are on the service, all that shall happen in this place, O oh God, that through it all some life might be changed, some heart might be made uh, lighter, O oh God, some life might be made better, O oh God, and that we might continue to move forward in the will and the way that you have for us, God. We lift up, Father, our young people before you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray that you would build a hedge of protection around them, O oh God. We pray, God, that you would continue to cover them and keep 
keep them safe, God. We realize that in this world, so much is happening, so much is going on. And God, we don't know from day to day, even from moment to moment at times. But Lord, we know that you are able, oh God. And so we trust you. We put our trust in you, oh God. And we pray, Father, that you would give us uh, the, the nurturing spirit and the, the patience and the mindset to be able to handle and embrace and celebrate our young people for who you are creating them to be, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would keep us in your care as only you can. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We're in the hands of our uh, men's choir and our music ministry at this time, and then we will prepare ourselves for the remainder of the service. Amen. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble. Thou the 
my comfort more than life to me whom I have on earth beside Crying, Savior, oh, Savior, why don't you hear my humble cry? And why on other? Why don't you hear my humble cry? And why on others thou art calling? Do not pass me by. Hallelujah. We don't want the Lord to pass us by. If he stops by your house, I want him to stop by mine. But in order for him to stop by mine, I know that I got to do things the right way. You know, I know he's judging you for you. He's going to judge me for me. And, and while he's thinking about it, we want to do this song uh, for the Lord. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this Jesus journey. I want Jesus to walk with me and listen hold my hand Lord hold my hand hold my hand Lord hold my hand Why journey I want you God to walk with me and if I've been good be my friend Lord be my friend be my friend Lord be my while I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me.
Listen, fellas. Walk with me. 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 When I'm healing, walk with me. Walk with me. When I'm hungry, walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Clean my heart, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me. Be my God, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me. Be my God. Walk with me. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me while I'm on this Jesus journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Good morning, church. Good morning. The youth of Purity Baptist Church and Urban Center being led in by our very own Pastor Reverend Dr. Robin Anthony Too Good II. Won't you give them some applause? people, our graduates. Our, can we give God praise for them? I mean, they're moving on, moving up, moving higher. We thank God for them. We thank God for them. And it's a, it's a blessing to see uh, several of us in the regalia and that. It's a blessing. It's a joy. It's an honor. Uh, I, I am grateful. Uh, Dr. Morgan and I both uh, received our doctorates last year, or so my second but and hers, and uh, we uh, both graduated summa cum laude, amen? amen. And uh, so we, great, we praise God, we praise God for that. And then to look at all of those who are here, we'll hear more about uh, the rest of our young people. They're going to come up and introduce themselves, but I wanted to say that part because we are not going to speak directly to that. But we're grateful. 
we're grateful. I think we all owe God another praise for our young people. Amen. Amen. We certainly are excited and delighted to go into the joy it is to, to be here and to be able to do what God would have for us to do on this Sunday morning. Uh, this sort of last Sunday before the, the, the real summer begins. Amen. Uh, I guess it's, it's already begun as hot as it is and, and, and the way we are uh, 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 allowing ourselves to cool off and to participate in so many activities and things. Uh, Uh, certainly, thank God for our men's choir who has done uh, so well this morning. Amen. In yes. fact, they were doing so well, I thought they had another selection. <laughs> I, I was sitting there waiting. I said, walk with me, Lord. Okay, now what's next? <laughs> Amen. And, uh, but they, they're doing... They're doing a wonderful job. And we thank God for our young people last Sunday, uh, how well they did. Amen. And uh, this Sunday, they're here to do this. And we've got some special treats uh, that have been put aside and, 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 and preparation that has been made for them. That's for them alone, at least first. And then uh, we'll be able to share with them uh, if, there's, if they leave us any. Amen. And that's all right if they don't, because it's been provided uh, for them. in making all of this happen uh, this Sunday, last Sunday, this Sunday, and all that we're doing, uh, and all of those who have worked with her, uh, but especially to her for uh, making sure things were done. I think it was Thursday that I came in here. Uh, it might have been Thursday, it might have been Friday that I came in, and I walked on the other side to get some water uh, out of the refrigerator. And when I looked in there, the table was already set. I said, well, I guess I another day but uh, so we, we are grateful to God for for that I want to say thank you to all of you who are here and sharing with us and we're now going to be led to the throne of grace by the chairman of our deacon ministry deacon Robert Henry Meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us pray. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Most gracious, all wise Heavenly Fathers, once again, we come at this sacred hour to give you glory, honor, and praise. For it is true, dear God. If I had 10,000 tongues, I still couldn't thank you enough. Dear Lord, I thank you for health. I thank you for strength. But most of all, dear God, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on Calvary's cross, bled and died, that I might have a right to the tree of life. And dear God, I pray for this waiting congregation, dear God. We come today, Lord, leaving it all at your altar, dear God. Dear God, we pray for the outer world, dear God. We pray for the confusion that's in the world, dear God. We serve a God of peace, yes. God of love, God of understanding. Yes. The wheel within the wheel, that bomb from Gilead, that is who you are, dear God. Give us strength, but most of all, dear God, forgive us as only you can. And dear God, I pray for the preacher of the hour, dear God. I pray that you build him up on every week and inside as he breaks the bread fresh and anew, dear God. For we need the word. We need the word more than any other time. We need to hide it within our hearts so that we do not sin against you, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for those that are bereaved. Yes, yes Lord, we pray for those that are bereaved. For yes, it is crying time to some, Lord, but it's rejoicing times for others. Yes. Dear God, we pray for those who are on their beds of affliction, dear God. I serve a God who's no short of his word. 
Only we have to do is what? Ask and seek. You know short of your word, dear God? But Lord, sometimes that's our problem, Lord. We're afraid to ask for you, dear God. We'll lean to our own understanding. But you are the answer. You are the way. You are the light. Yes. Lord, give us faith and understanding to depend on you, dear God. Yes, God, you're the author and finisher of our faith. Go with us, Lord. Forgive us as only you can. Lord, I pray for those on Capitol Hill, dear Lord. I pray for our Supreme Court, dear God. But Lord, I pray for clarity yeah. of heart and mind. Yeah. Lord, we see man's inhumanity to man. But it's not your way. It's not God's way, but man's way. Your way will always prevail. It will keep our hands within your hands. You know short of all that you're going to promise, dear God. Because you keep your promise, dear God. You keep all of your promises. So go with us. Stand by us and forgive us as only you can. All these blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name, our soul says amen. Amen. Amazing great how sweet the sound that
Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen. We thank God for our men singing and reminding us of just how amazing the grace of God is. Amen. I don't know about you, but I exist because his grace is amazing. I'm here today because his grace is amazing. Amen. 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 We're glad to see, to have so many with us, but we're especially glad to see Reverend Rollins with us today. Amen. We know she's been through so much and uh, we're excited uh, that she's joined us today and uh, we're grateful to God for that. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. We want to um, be mindful that uh, today is our Academic Recognition Sunday, and our young people have done some extraordinary and extremely positive things uh, that we want to hear them share with us. And so we're going to uh, turn the service over into the hands of uh, Sister Patricia Dabney, and she's going to guide our young people uh, in their uh, expressions to us uh, as it comes to what they have done and what they continue to do. Uh, we want to celebrate all of our young people. God created each one of them so beautifully. And, uh, and we want to celebrate each one of them. And we're not forcing them in any direction. We're not saying you have to do this or you have to do that. But we want to celebrate the course that God has set for each and every one of them individually. Uh, because when God sets your course, even when you're moved in another direction uh, by force, you still end up back at that course anyway. Amen? And so we'd rather them go the course that God has set for them uh, than to move them in the wrong direction. And so we're going to listen to them. We're going to embrace them and celebrate each one of them for what God is doing in their life. Going to kindergarten. My name is Jayla, and 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 I'm five years, no six years old. Second grade. My name is Elise, and I'm six years old, and I'm going to the first grade. My name is Wayne Abato, and I'm, and I'm seven, and I'm going to second grade. And I'm nine years old, and I'm about to go to fourth grade. I'm Riley Battle. Um, I'm eight and I'm going to third grade. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Javon Clark and, and I'm eight years old and I'm about to go to third grade. Yeah. I'm Maurice Hickman and I'm going to, and I'm and I'm not, and I'm going to fifth grade. My, my name is King, and I'm eight, and I'm going to second grade. My name's Anise Morris, I'm 10 years old, and I'm going to fifth grade. My name is Naomi, I'm 13, and I'm going to 8th grade. My name is Alani, I'm 11, and I'm going to 6th grade. 
My name is Amy Marie. I'm nine, and I'm going to the sixth grade. My name is Ava Savage, and I'm 11, and I'm going to sixth grade. My name is Aaron McKinney. I am going to I'm going to 10th grade. Because of the pandemic, we couldn't do what we normally do, but we like to give our um, youth their props. We like to give our youth their props, so even though it's a year or two late, we're still going to do it. One of our youth, who we're very proud of, couldn't be here today, but I'm going to read her um, statement. the granddaughter of Wander Knight. Unfortunately, I am not able to attend the service because I am out of town. I recently graduated in May with my Bachelor of Social Work from Mary Baldwin University in Virginia. I was in the Ida B. Wells Honor Society and the Omicron Delta Kappa Honor Society in school. I held leadership positions by working in the office of inclusive excellence, serving as the Ubuntu Mentorship Program Director and Social Chair. I was also the Vice President of Minority Clubs United, a member of the Black Student Alliance, and Artistic Director of Greater Things Dance Ministry. While I was away at school, I continued to seek God by attending Christ Our Redeemer AME Church with Reverend Andrea Cornett Scott, who also helped support and guide me through my educational and spiritual journey. My future plans include attending Howard University this fall to earn my Master of Social Work, focusing on communities, administration, and policy. I want to thank Purity for feeding my spirit and always showing up for me when I needed it, whether that was a prayer or transportation to school. Without God, I am nothing, but with God, I am everything. Thank you. So, now we will have statements by our um, two students. One is going to be a junior and one is going to be a sophomore. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> As uh, most of you know, maybe not all of you, my name is James McKinney. I am a junior deacon here at Parity Baptist Church in Urban Center. I am the son of Aaron McKinney and Jeanette McKinney, and I also have a little brother, Aaron, junior, also junior deacon Aaron McKinney. Um, in 2021, I graduated from Westlake High School and I then moved on to Virginia Commonwealth University where I just finished my first year. I... Thank you. Um, and now I'm, well, in my first year, um, I chose my major as mechanical engineering and um, I plan to, you know, use that major and that degree to become an automotive designer after I graduate. Um, overall, my first year went pretty well. I tried to stay active. I was in the flag football rec league, basketball rec league, and I also was in a black engineering, um, black engineering team called V Formation. Um, but
I am the daughter of trustee John Emerson and pro tem deaconess Kimberly Emerson and the older sister of Alani Emerson. I graduated from Benjamin Banneker Academic High School in 2020 and I am currently an incoming junior at North Carolina Central University in Durham, North Carolina. I am pursuing a degree in business administration and I plan to use the skills that I gain to start an event planning business. Within my first two years at school, I've learned a lot about myself and I've seen how far I can go for the things that I want. Having also started college during a pandemic, I have faced challenges many students have not. I learned to navigate life on my own, make friends, and complete classes without, having, without being able to have the human interaction that most college students have. I learned how to advocate for myself. It was very difficult and disheartening having to do that on my own and in a state that I knew very few people. Eventually, I was able to establish better communication with people regardless of if I could meet them in person or not. Overall, my first two years of college have been trying, but I have found joy in my troubles. I wanna first thank God for all the blessings he has provided me. I wanna thank my parents for constantly being available for me, whether it was arranging plans to come home or just talking about the nonsense events happening at school. I wanna thank my grandparents for assisting me in my travels to and from North Carolina. And lastly, I wanna thank my church family for keeping me in prayer as your prayers have helped me endure. Thank you all. We are so proud of our college students. Not always, when we have our college students, have they grown up from babies to college students. These two were born here at Purity, so we are especially proud of them. That's it. What a delight, what an honor, what a joy. Can we give our young people a, another round of applause? I am so grateful to God for how they have presented themselves today and for how they are doing what's necessary to be done. I wanted to be certain that um, there was something on our giving choices for our young people today. And the closest thing I see is youth department, amen? Uh, or special gifts, so we'll choose special gifts. If you have not given to our uh, academic, um, academic recognition committee, if you have not uh, done that, you haven't given to the work, um, I don't think there's any more proof as to why we need to do it than we've seen today. I don't think there's any more reason that we need to see as to the fact that things are used wisely. And so we want to be certain that we do that today uh, as we prepare our hearts for giving. Uh, if you think uh, especially about our academic recognition, uh, that would be appropriate today. Uh, if you're in the sanctuary and you want to give to that cause particularly and you want to put it in the basket, just put it in an envelope and put academic recognition on it. Just put an A on it. We'll know that that means academic recognition. And, uh, and we want you to, uh, to do that. Uh, we are just delighted uh, to have heard from each one of them individually. I, I prefer... going the direction that they're headed. Uh, there's something about them stating it uh, that means something to, to us and to them. Amen. Uh, we are reminded in the Bible where it says you sometimes you got to speak over yourself. David spoke over himself. Amen. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself and you've got to speak those things out into them. So to hear them say it 
to hear them declare who they are, their name and their age and their grade, to hear them declare that. Uh, that, that was a powerful experience and one that I hope to repeat in years to come because I think that we have really, uh, truly heard, uh, heard uh, some blessings in here uh, today. And to know that from purity, so many things are happening. We've got... And, and dynamic. I, I, I look at Z and I see how she has matriculated and, and I look at James and see how they are matriculating and uh, what, a, what a dynamic uh, what a dynamic thing to know uh, that it is that purity that they have uh, truly been reared in their faith and in their spiritual journey uh, that's a blessing that's a blessing um, now uh, as our ushers prepare their hearts to um, move through the sanctuary with the um, collection trays. If there are those who are here and, and you're giving cash or check and you wanted to go to academic recognition today, put it in an envelope, mark A on it. If you're writing a check, just put academic recognition at the bottom and uh, we'll do it. If you're selecting it in your text to give, uh, just select special gifts. There's a, a thing on there that says special gifts. It's on there? Okay. All right, so academic recognition, select academic recognition on the list and, uh, and you'll be able to uh, uh, give directly to academic recognition. But we want you to give today uh, as we prepare our hearts to do what's necessary to be done uh, for our young people. Uh, let me also say this to you. Be kind to our young people. You know what I mean, okay? And just put it in their hand however you want to do it. But be kind to our young people. Uh, today when you see them, amen, let them know how much you uh, appreciate and celebrate them for being them. And I know uh, that God will continue to make a way uh, for each and every one of them. Amen? amen. We'll hear from our men's chorus and they'll sing until they get tired of singing. Amen? <laughs> amen. I am. But Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank the Lord I'm still alive. testimony you know I could have been dead and gone but Lord you let me live on I am a living testimony and I thank the Lord I'm still alive listen I've had many miracles after miracles perform in my life. You kept having mercy on me. I didn't even deserve to be alive. When I see danger, I could not see. You kept your angels camped all around me. And I thank the Lord I'm still alive. Whoa, I am. I'm a living testimony. You know I could have been dead and gone. But Lord, you let me live on. Whoa. I'm a living testimony And I thank the Lord I'm still alive You know what? I had many friends and loved ones Who've gone on before me 
Lord, it caused my heart to bleed. But I realized it could have been me. I know that I'm not worthy, Lord. But Lord, you kept on keeping me around. And I thank the Lord I'm still alive. I'm a living testimony You know I could have been dead and gone But Lord, you let me live on Oh, I am I'm a living testimony And I thank the Lord I'm still alive Oh, I am I'm a living testimony You know I could have been dead and gone But Lord, you let me live on testimony and I thank the Lord I'm still alive I'm still alive I'm still alive I'm still alive I thank you Jesus Jesus, I'm still alive. You woke me up this morning. I'm still alive. You put clothes on my back. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. You put food on the table. Oh, I'm still alive. I thank you, Jesus. I'm still alive. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. I'm still alive. Food on my table. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Put a roof over my head. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. Thank the Lord that I'm still alive. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. Amen. And you know what I've learned in this day and time, we don't, it's no age on that. Because we're slipping away as young as, as, as young can be. And uh, so we all ought to give God praise that we're still here. Amen. We ought to give God praise that we're still here. That we still got activity of our limbs, still got breath in our body, because it could have been the other way. In fact, if it had been based on how we lived, it should have been the other way. But I'm so grateful that God has looked beyond our fault and he has still supplied our every need. We thank God for our men today. Amen. They've done a wonderful job in leading us and aiding us in this worship experience today. And we are indeed delighted and excited about what God is doing. Uh, we're certainly grateful for uh, all of those who have done whatever needed to be done this week uh, to make things happen. We realize there was much going on, uh, much happening around us, and you responded to all of it. And we're grateful. Uh, we're grateful for that. We do want to uh, recognize and we'll say 
uh, through email uh, as well. Um, initially, there had been, um, we still have a praise dance ushers before. Uh, want to announce by email that there will, we had talked about Sister Boyd not receiving calls and that, uh, but I've gotten word that she can receive short calls, okay? And so we'll send that out by email. I want to recognize um, uh, a career educator, left one school system, retired from one school system with honors, and then went to another I want to recognize Deaconess Cynthia Ray. Deaconess Ray, won't you stand? Deaconess Ray retired, retired this year. Now, Deaconess Ray, how many years? How many years of service? Fifty-three years of service. Fifty-three years of service. Now, listen, that's a teacher. <laughs> Fifty-three years. She left the District of Columbia Public Schools. Many, of, many teachers did that during that time. They would retire from DCPS and go to Prince George's County. But most of them stayed there maybe five years just to get vested in the system or something like that. Not Deaconess Ray. She kept on teaching, amen, and, and worked almost a full nother career. And, uh, and I'm so grateful for, for you and uh, what's done. I, I'm thinking back to the summer camps that you, used to, that you used to have here. And uh, I, I enjoyed those summer camps and, and, and all that, that happened then and all that you did. And so uh, I know that uh, it's a great loss to the education community, uh, but it's a great joy for you uh, to be able to now see the fruit of your labor and the reward of your hand in the work that you've done. And so we're glad and we honor and celebrate you today. Uh, now, I don't know if this next person wants to be honored or not, but I'm going to mention them. Uh, and if they don't want to be honored, I will blame it on Rahel. Amen. Uh, I want to uh, just say uh, this week, uh, my mother retired after almost 30 years of service for the District of Columbia Government Office of Tax and Revenue. Amen. On Tuesday, she, on Tuesday, she walked out of there for the last time. Amen. And, uh, and, and walked with her head held high. She's done great. And uh, now she's off to the next phase of life. Amen. And uh, I want to certainly honor and uh, recognize her uh, for her diligence and for that work and say that truly I'm very proud of her uh, as her son uh, to, to see all that she has done. And she's always been an example. My mother would go to work even if, even if she didn't do anything else. She was going to go to work. Go to work and take care of her parents. Those are two things she was going to do. And, uh, of course, give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. And so uh, now she, she's retired and uh, she don't have no babies at home. Amen. <laughs> so she can, she's free to do whatever the Lord put on her heart to do. I didn't hear you. Huh? Oh, you can. Okay. So I can say that? Okay. So she is relocating. I didn't know if you, I didn't know if she wanted me to do that, but she says it's okay. My mother will be relocating to Houston, Texas. Okay, yeah, she's relocating. She's relocating to Houston, and so uh, we're preparing. I want her to be happy. She's given her life for so many and in service of so many. 
Uh, she, she sort of sacrificed many things to take care of her parents. And if this is something that makes her heart happy, then I'm going to do all I can to make sure she can get to Houston, Texas, and, uh, and, and that she enjoys herself. Now, I, I ain't going to go for no foolishness, but, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, I, but I want her to be happy. That's what I want more than anything else. And uh, I've got enough mothers at Purity. Well, they're not my mothers, but they are close enough. Amen. Uh, my mother, my grandmother. She can go there on watch care. <laughs> she can go on watch care. Uh, but I, 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 as long as I've been a pastor, I've pastored my mother, and I'm going to keep on pastoring her. Amen. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's just a blessing. All right. I didn't know she wanted it announced, but that's good. Now that's out. I don't have to, you, you don't have to worry about it any longer. Amen. So we don't know the date yet, but we know that it's soon. Uh, soon to come. So get all your time in with her now, although I know she'll be back to visit us uh, at the times that need to be done. Oh, <laughs> she didn't say that. Did she? <laughs> okay. All right. But we're looking forward to what, what, God is, what God is doing. Now, I think we've got a special presentation. Our young people are going to share with us in terms of uh, praise dance, and so we're going to uh, have that. And then following that, uh, we're going to move forward with the word. Our young people are gonna go out uh, after they do this praise dance, and they're going to enjoy some special things that have been prepared for them. Uh, we'll, we'll greet them uh, after the word, amen? Amen.
Can we give God a, a hand clap of praise as our young people exit? Amen. Let's let them know how much we appreciate them. Amen. 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 Are they going to the other side now, Sister Debbie? Okay. So they be sitting now or they? Okay. All right. Okay. Maybe they don't know. All right. Amen. All right. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. As they, as they exit. Amen. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Dynamic, dynamic, dynamic. Magnificent. Wonderful. Amen, amen. We give God praise for our young people and for their willingness to uh, be uh, used in the service of the Lord. I, um, was talking to uh, Sister Pearl Mana Perry this week, and um, she said, Pastor, uh, you so young? And I said, say that again, Sister Perry. I didn't hear you. I, <laughs> my phone was acting up. Can you say, can you say that again? <laughs> Amen. And uh, I thank God for her, though, and, and for all uh, who stand in the need of prayer. We are lifting up. Um, uh, uh, Deaconess Pro Tem Emerson and so many who have dealt with grief and loss uh, through this um, period and time. Uh, we know that Sister Rogers, um, we are going to share in those services uh, for her husband on Thursday. And uh, so there's so much that is going on in the world around us and um, we just have to keep those things in prayer. Uh, because prayer is the only certain thing in uncertain times. Amen. It's the only certain thing in uncertain times. I want you to go to the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4. Esther chapter 4. Now, I didn't say go say hello to Esther. <laughs> but we do have an Esther here. I said go to the book of Esther. 
Esther chapter 4, amen, verse 14. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Can we give God praise for our percussionists this morning, amen? Our videographers, amen, they, they are doing such a wonderful job, amen. Our sound persons and all of those who are making it happen, we thank God for you. Amen. Esther chapter 4, verse 14. We're really just going to focus on that B clause, but I'm going to read it in its entirety. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise for the Jews from another place. But thou. whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That be clause again, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to stand and to declare your word is true. And now, God, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like for you to think of me for a little while on the subject for such a time as this. The book of Esther is a very interesting historical narrative that in a real sense gives us a clear understanding of what it means when even if God's name is not mentioned, how he still orders our steps. If you will read the book of Esther, you will take note that God, Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim, whichever derivative of his name you're looking for, is not mentioned and yet from beginning to end you see his hand moving in the situations that go on. One of the things that Esther brings to us as we explore this topic for such a time as this is that even when we can't see him, even when we don't hear others calling his name, even when it seems like the situation is not moving or you cannot recognize him directly. That does not mean that he is not intimately involved with everything that you're going through. Has, in many ways, the book of Esther and Esther, this character in the Bible, has sometimes been looked down upon for many reasons. There are those who have even questioned its place in the biblical canon. And then there are those who question whether Esther should have ended up where she ended up. Because the fact of the matter is, for as much as Esther uh, was able to do and to carry out the work and the mission and the responsibility that was ahead of her, Esther had some struggles in her past. Esther had been an orphan. Her parents had, the scripture doesn't directly say what happened to her parents, whether they died, whether they abandoned, whatever happened, but she was an orphan. And Mordecai adopted her. And, 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 and that's an interesting thing to, to pull to the front because 
there are many of us who have had some issues in our past and some things that we wouldn't necessarily want recognized or things that we don't want on record or that we don't want on note. But those things have really shaped who we are today. Because the truth of the matter is, had Esther not been adopted by Mordecai, had she not been an orphan, who knows whether she would have ended up in the situation and the place that she was for the time that she was there. What I'm trying to say to you is that every up, every down, every in, every out, every around about is all working to get you to the place, places where God would have you to be. And even a mistake, a taking of the exit too soon, a, a getting off of the exit too early, even that kind of thing, a passing the exit and having to come back to it, even that becomes a way that God is using to bless you. Yesterday I had the opportunity to participate in the graduation uh, exercises uh, school where I graduated from. And um, I thought in my mind, just in my mind, now the letter says something else, but in my mind I thought the graduation was being held at Charles Flowers High School. I was already late because I had some other things to do. I needed to stop by uh, Sister Perry's um, uh, daughter's service. I needed to get my hair. I had other things that I needed to do before I went to this graduation, but I knew I needed to be there. I was running late, but I got there. I said, oh, I'm going to be in good time. I got the Charles Flowers, and I saw six cars. And I said, this is not the school. If I were early, it would be one thing, but I'm late. I'm at Charles Flowers, I need to be at Henry Wise. On my way to Henry Wise, um, someone called and they said, well, if you're running late, it's okay because there's been a bad accident and persons are just now being able to get there. Now, I didn't run into the accident going to Flowers because of the way that I went. And by the time I was on my way to Wise, the accident had been cleared up. And I said to myself, it just because I made a mistake, I mean, it was in my mind to go with, but that mistake really was a blessing because I wasn't caught in anything that I did not need to be caught in that would have raised my anxiety because you all know how I am, want to be on time, want to be there, want to get ready. Want, but but, but I, I, I thought about that example in thinking about the life of Esther. That there are times when we may end up at the wrong destination and have to be rerouted because uh, as I was going, uh, I forgot to turn the GPS off that was leading me to flowers. So every time I got to a corner until I'd stopped it, it would say, okay, rerouting. <laughs> turn around, make a legal and safe U-turn. Every time, make a legal and safe U-turn, trying to take me back. But there are times when God will reroute our path to get us to the place that he would have for us to be. Come from a humble background. And she won't the only person in the room that knew it. There were persons probably uh, not recorded in the scripture, but making little comments as she walked by and, 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 and saying things. And often in our lives, we have persons that may know what they know and they, they try to make little comments, they try to indicate things when you're on the rise and when you're on the move. But can I tell you, you ought to tell them thank you. Yeah. I, listen, I, I've told you this several times. I, I really, I think, I'm going to start typing letters. I, I want to send letters to all, all my haters. I want to send thank you notes to all of them. Because the scriptures say that your enemies are going to be your footstool. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but when I, when I need to get, get a little higher, when I need to stand a little, I'm already tall, but when I need to stand a little taller, it's that footstool 
that helps me to stand tall. So I thank God for my haters because all they're doing is raising me higher, moving me closer to my purpose, so lifting me up a little more, elevating me, motivating me, making sure that I go in the right direction. Let it listen. You ain't got no haters, you ain't popping. Esther was chosen even with, with all of the checkeredness in her past. And God used her to create deliverance for an entire people. I want to get to this part in the, in the text because this is where I am with this sermon this morning. I really only have one strong point and maybe a half of one. But the point that I want to share with you this morning is, what has God orchestrated your steps? What is God saying to you, even at whatever space and place you are in in life? What is he speaking to you that he wants to use you to accomplish? Esther didn't come with perfection. Esther didn't come with every I dotted and every T cross. But Esther came as she was. And for as much as we celebrate what Esther did, Esther really wasn't trying to do it. If you read the text, Esther wasn't trying to do it. She, see, sometimes we take the humanity out of these biblical characters. And I try to put it back in there so we'll know. Esther was just like some of us. Listen, I done made it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got mine, you get yours, okay? I ain't coming here to try to save no whole Jewish people. I came to be who I am in the queen's, I mean, in the king's uh, palace. And uh, God bless you. God speed. May heaven smile upon you. <laughs> but it was Mordecai. Who's your Mordecai? It was Mordecai that talked to Esther and said, Esther, your reach, your impact is far greater than what you... Don't settle, Esther. Don't settle for, 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 for what you think you've accomplished or for what you think it is. There's something greater in you, Esther, a purpose that's greater than you. have gotten complacent and we've settled and we've not understood that there is a purpose greater than us that we must achieve. Mordecai said, Esther, if you don't do it, there's nobody more positioned right now to do it than you. And God didn't bring you to this point. He didn't position you. He didn't take care of you. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't wipe your slate clean. He didn't change your past and give you a family when you didn't have one and allow you to be able to grow up and give you the beauty and give you all. He didn't give you all of that for you to just throw it by the wayside. And far too many of us are squandering what God has given us. And I'm not talking about anything uh, as basic as whether you come in or whether you're online or, listen, as long as you're here, that's all right. However you get here. If you're on conference call, now conference call today is down because the thing won't dial out. But however you are here, whichever campus you're on, there is still a greater work. There is still a greater purpose. God reminded Esther through Mordecai that Esther, you can't be stingy with what, you, what you're trying to do. You can't, be, you can't be a cheapskate with it, Esther. You got you to gotta, you gotta allow the blessings to flow. 
and see an openness in it. You're trying to keep everything, Esther, and while you're trying to keep everything, there are people who need the door open. They need the reservoir open. They need the way made. God wants us to see ourselves in a way that we realize that there's a greater purpose that we're serving for. Whatever work, whatever ministry, whatever thing God has placed in your life, on your heart, in your mind, God needs you to stand up and do it. And to not be a gatekeeper. Because there are many gatekeepers in them. That, 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 that's why there's so many bumps in the road on this Christian journey. Because you got gatekeepers. Well, it costs too much. We ain't that, it's, it, we, it, well, we ain't did it that way before. Well, it's, it's, it's this, it's that, it's, the, it's, the, it's, listen. Anything, any work that God has for you to do, he will make every provision for you to do it. And he will cover in any way whatever it is that he has destined and designed to be done. And you'll look up and wonder, how did, listen, how did we feed 5,000 and then we only had this little boy's fish sandwich? He went to Horace and Dickie's and all we had was his little sandwich on a day when they wasn't giving out no extra fish. And yet 5,000 are fed and then we got food left over. Folks taking away little plastic trays and folks pulling aluminum foil out their pocketbook and all this kind of stuff, pulling out bags. I, I was at a banquet yesterday, I'm a rush on, and uh, I was sitting at the table with two uh, ladies and, and they, they didn't finish their food. And, and the one lady said to the other, she said, look, I got some bags in my, <laughs> some plastic bags. I got some Ziplocs in my <laughs> I, and, and, and I, I looked over there because I hadn't finished my cake. I said, can I have one of them? Uh, <laughs> there are times when God wants to use us further than we're willing to go. And we need a Mordecai, a wise Mordecai to say to us, don't get stagnant where you are. Don't settle for what this is right now. There is something greater that must be done. And if we don't do it, we will miss the move of God. whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And will you allow excuse making to stop so that you can advance the kingdom of God and make things better, not just for yourself, but for those around you who are depending on you. And even as, because we have people in all kinds of phases, we saw our youngest, and we've got even our most senior here. And, 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 and there are all kinds of phases that we're in. But whatever that next phase is, is for you, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Allow God to use your willingness to make a difference in this land. That's what Jesus did. He was a, a, a keen example of coming to the kingdom for such a time as this, because it was one Friday that they reminded him even before that, that listen, listen, you, he, he told his disciples, listen, I'm going away. I didn't come to stay always, I'm going away. 
came for such a time as this. He went to the garden, he prayed, and, and he prayed that each other, the blood, the sweat was dripping down like blood. But he said, nevertheless, not with my will, but thy will be done. One Friday, he allowed them to pierce him in his side. He allowed them to put nails in his hand, a crown of thorns on his head, nails in his feet, and on that Friday, he died. Oh, yes, he died. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. He died that I might have a right to the tree of life. He died, and they put him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there Friday night. He stayed there all day Saturday and battled the wars of hell and battled the, the, all of the things that happened and, and set captivity, uncaptivated captivity. But just before the breaking of day, Oh, y'all knew I was going to get that. Why the Jew was still on the roses. Don't let this uh, doctorate <laughs> make you think I don't know how to go there. Oh, don't let this little hat trick you. <laughs> great God, great God, on that third day morning while it was early, while the Jew was still on the roses, early Sunday morning, he got up. He got up with all power. And that same power rests in you. What if? As this. Will you give God your heart? Will you give him your service? Or will you hold back? Will you say, we can't do it, we can't afford it, we can't make it, we can't... Or, or will you give him your best? And trust him to supply your every need. The doors of the church are open. And as we stand all over the building, maybe there is somebody today that needs Jesus and needs him in a great way. I want to tell you, you need him because you have a past because you need a friend and because he holds the future. And if you have been scrolling and scrolling or you're in this sanctuary or you're wherever you are, you're on our YouTube campus, you're on our, uh, you're on our website campus, whatever campus you're on, you've expanded and added two more campuses. But whatever campus you're on, If you hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you today, you may view this broadcast later than it has been recorded. If you hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you, then my challenge to you is to reply with a yes. Yes, Lord, I hear you. And if you want to begin a personal relationship with Jesus, then let's, let's pray this prayer of faith together. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me. That your blood pays for my sins and provides me with the gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive that gift. And I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. 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 Can we give God praise for somebody that has accepted Christ as their Savior? Maybe you are here and you're saved, or you just got saved, or you just said, and you just need a church home. I remind everybody from, from the start, Purity is not a perfect church. We're not perfect, I'm not a perfect pastor. But we serve a perfect God who empowers each one of us to do his will 
even in such a time as this. And if purity is the place where we are fertile soil, a place where you can sow and where you can grow, and if you hear his voice telling you to unite with us today, I'd be honored to be your pastor. We'd be honored to be your church family. You can come down. We'll receive you. You can type I'm home in the comments. You can give us a call at 202-397-4333. 202-397-4333. And we'll aid you in getting in the right place at the right time. Amen? Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What a beautiful service we've had. What a joy and delight it has been to be in the service of the Lord. I acknowledged uh, a few weeks ago, maybe two or three weeks ago, uh, that there was a change in leadership in the deaconess ministry. Uh, now I want to acknowledge and celebrate a change in leadership of our nurses ministry. Uh, our nurses ministry's new president is uh, Sister Veronica Rose. Amen. She was elected uh, last week in their meeting and she is the new president uh, and their new vice president uh, is uh, Deaconess Gloria Watson and so we are grateful uh, for that move and change in leadership. Amen. Uh, amen. You can give God praise. Amen. Amen. So we are going to support uh, Nurse Rose in uh, whatever she needs to do as a new president, new chairperson. I see Trustee uh, Tucker shaking her head. Uh, she's a veteran president and chairperson here. She knows how to work with me. So if you've got any problems about that, <laughs> she can give you some advice. Amen. <laughs> amen. And uh, how to deal with the work. Amen. We're grateful to God for, for what he's doing and continues to do in our midst. And uh, listen, we're going to continue to pray for one another because prayer is needed in this time prayer is needed. There are many people going through many more struggles than we ever know. Many more struggles than they will ever admit. Many more struggles than they can even acknowledge, even bring themselves to acknowledge. And uh, we want to continue to pray, continue to pray for them. I want to thank those of you who participated with us in our uh, Right here, so you can tell them. I ain't gonna call no names, but you can tell them when you get a chance. Okay, <laughs> amen, amen. And uh, we're grateful to God for for what He has done and continues to do in in our midst. Amen. Won't you stand as we look to the Lord for our benediction? Our young people have some special treats on the other side that were germanely brought for them. Okay, that's the young people's treats. All right. Now, there may be a few things left, and if they are, they will give them to you, okay? If there's not anything left, then they don't have anything to give you. You don't go over there just snatching up stuff off the table and all that kind of stuff. I've been at this church. Yeah, I've been here too, and I ain't going over there snatching up nothing, okay? Because that was bought for the young people to enjoy. And we want to give them the opportunity to enjoy it. Let's look to the Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God be with you. Amen.